everyone, I hope you're well. So today I'm really, really excited to be filming another one of my Dates with Kate storytime videos. In this series I'm going to be telling you about some of the dates that I've been on, some of them very romantic, some of them quite horrific, and I will also be scoring each date at the end of each video as well on stuff like the date location, the looks, more importantly, the snog. <laughs> Today I am going to be telling you perhaps my all time favourite date story. This is one that when people ask have I been on any horrendous dates, this is the one I pretty much always tell them. It happened quite a few years ago now, it was actually in 2011. Parts of this story I think you're going to think that I've made up because it is that ridiculous but that is just my luck it seems um but you can rest assured it's completely true all of this did actually happen so after every single date that i've pretty much been on in the last 10 years i have messaged kind of like a summary roundup of how the date went to my best friends ever we have like a facebook group so i actually spent an hour last night trawling back through my facebook messages to try and find the summary that i sent my best friends about this date and i found it and it's great that i did because it's reminded me of a couple of details house that I had previously forgotten and it includes a twist. Are you ready? Let's get started. This is the tale of Mr. Deformed Feet. I'm going to nickname him Ben for this video. That is not his real name. I'm protecting his identity. So Ben, Ben and I started chatting on Plenty of Fish. I actually deleted my account after this date because it was that horrific. <laughs> it was way before Tinder was around so I actually used the website and we were chatting for a while before deciding to arrange a date and we had quite a lot in common, we lived quite near each other at the time and he was an artist. I'm going to read this bit out from the message that I sent to my girlfriends the day. He's an artist who uses lipstick as his medium and then I put in brackets good so far to paint exotic porno pictures and then in brackets bit odd. He seemed lovely and we met because we had loads in common. <laughs> so we met in Hoxton, I think we went to Hoxton um, kit Bar and Kitchen. It was nice, we got chatting, we had loads in common. But I did notice that for the first hour or so I couldn't really get a word in because he was talking an awful lot about himself. Um, it seemed to me at the time I wrote down that I thought he was trying to like convince me of all of his great points and all of the great stuff he was doing in his life like in order to convince me of what a great person he was. He also said around that time that he had a photographic memory and that he thought that he recognised me from MySpace back in the day. So I made a little mental note in my head here of oh really that's that's really interesting if so myspace was quite a few years before that so we had more to drink i remember i was having wine and i remember getting around um and by about nine o'clock i was quite tipsy by this point i am a lightweight he said to me do you want to see me again which is quite early on a date to be asking a question like that but i said yes because i was quite tipsy and it was going well like it wasn't horrendous by this point also around the same time of the night he said that he wouldn't be able to stay in the uh, pub much longer because he couldn't afford it which is absolutely fine like I'm not someone who needs fine dining or anything like that but it was like a normal pub in London with normal London pub prices it there was nothing expensive about it so I was like mm, why would you suggest to meet here then if you know that you couldn't afford it anyway after that he was like so do you want to come back to my flat now normally I would never do this I have never gone back to someone's flat on a first date I've never ever had a one night stand in my entire life but I said yes for some reason I think it was a combination of things hear me out I was quite drunk it was going okay thirdly he lived above a pub which I have a bit of a fascination with because it's an East End pub. I'm not going to tell you what one because then it might you might be able to narrow down who the guy is. I doubt it, but just in case. It's a pub where a murder happened back in the day and I'm fascinated with kind of serial killers and true crime. So he lived upstairs, like above the pub, and I was so impressed by this. I was like, yes, I want to see what the upstairs is like. I want to go back to, like, I want to go to this pub. I, th I just thought it was incredible. Don't judge me. So we went back to his. Um, we had to walk through a very large beer garden to get upstairs which was very embarrassing because I remember it was very busy that night and everyone just kind of stared at us as we walked up. Anyway, got upstairs. It was a shithole. There, <laughs> there were buckets 
all over the floor in the corridors with holes in the ceiling it was just a bit dreary and a bit drab but I was like you know it's okay I've got to see the upstairs of this pub what great history this place has all right we can run with it so we got into his room but then he proceeded to spend about 30 minutes showing me every single little thing in his room do you know when like you're in school and a f your friend comes around your house for the first time and then you're like oh this is where I keep my medals this is where I keep my school books this is where I sleep it was like that he literally showed it wasn't that big of a room it was like just a square so there wasn't much walking space or much to show me but he still did it he was like these are my art books this is my bed this is my bedside table this is where I keep my clothes and I was just like what is going on went with it though i'm polite i'm a nice person i went with it then he decided to show me a video of um him in a band and he was the lead singer and so he put like one of their music videos on his laptop for me to watch whilst he went into the kitchen um to make some pizza we bought some pizza on the way back to his flat from like a news agent's like a frozen one so he went to the kitchen to put some pizza on and left me watching his music videos kind of just awkwardly sitting on his bed at which point I noticed that one of his browsers that was open was Pornhub. I didn't bring it up. I was just like, you know, he's a young guy, that's fine, everyone does it. At that point I was kind of like, you know what, I, I'm i not feeling this anymore, like it's a bit awkward. I think I need to go. So then um, he came back with the pizza. I think we might have put like a film on or something. And we were sitting on his bed. He kind of had his arm around me whilst he was chomping on this pizza in my ear. I have that thing where I can't stand the sound of people eating. It fills me with rage inside. Like my blood bubbles when I hear people eating loudly. And he was doing that. So I was trying to like formulate my escape plan as all this was happening. And then out of the blue, he was like, I just need to show you something with my feet and I was like okay and he proceeded to take his shoes and socks off and his feet were deformed his toes were like that they were all overlapping all crumpled he had the biggest bunions I've ever seen in my life and I literally did not know what to say I remember just sitting there like trying to hide the disgust on my face and all I could think to say was you could probably get that sorted on the NHS. Guys, I can't even explain to you how bad they were. Everything that was running through my head was, why is he showing me this? What is wrong with his feet? Like, why on a first date? Why are you doing this now? What is happening? He was still eating his pizza at this point when he explained that he just wanted to show me and get it out of the way at an early time in our relationship. But he said it was because he wore too many kind of vintage pointy shoes when he was growing up. So they gave him deformed feet and bunions so at that point i was like i need to go home um made up an excuse like all oh, my pills are at home i need to take my pill like i need to go now i remember him this is quite bad i remember him getting me in a headlock like a playful one being like oh no you're not going da, da, da. and i remember that being a little bit scary but i was very assured in myself that i was going to get out of there and that i definitely was not going to stay the night like i think he wanted me to i managed to escape say goodbye to him i think i had to promise him that i was going to see him again he was kind of very forceful in that way and i had to do the walk of shame past everyone that was still in the beer garden by myself it was very awkward anyway got home it was fine he texted me the next next day being like oh i miss you it's great to meet you da, 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 da. now fast forward a couple of days later i was like what did he say about myspace that we spoke on myspace or something i logged into my myspace it was very hard to get into in fact i've tried so much to get back into my myspace so i can get the screen grabs for this video but i did also copy and paste them to my friends when i found them so i can read you some of said messages out we had had a conversation in 2007 it's like four years prior to our date we had had a conversation via myspace i'm gonna read them out for you i think i might have put like a myspace bulletin up if you weren't familiar with myspace it's basically like a, a facebook status or something or like a tweet where you put a post up and people can reply to you he replied saying oh now you want to be swept off your feet rolls eyes i replied back with a cheeky grin and he replied back saying so what does that mean 
Are you going to give me a chance now? Okay, alarm bells ringing. So we'd obviously had another conversation prior to this as well, but I don't know what it is. I can't find evidence of it anywhere. And I replied to him saying, I met someone the other night and I don't want to mess things up, but I'll let you know how it goes. And he replied, that sounds a bit insulting to be honest. I was here long before him and you never gave me the time of day. I'm not gonna sit here and wait for you to have your fill, had your cake and eat it, etc. So if it doesn't work out with him and I'm still single, then maybe. But if not, then you've missed your chance, I'm afraid. What is going on? I replied saying, I'm really sorry I insulted you. I don't want to upset people and by messaging you, I seem to have done so. So sorry. I don't know what happened, but he basically had a go at me a few years prior to that because I wouldn't go on a date with him. Baffling. Absolutely baffling. I love this date story. I think it's hilarious. I think it's baffling and bizarre. And whenever I go back to that pub now, I always keep an eye out for him. That is the tale of Deformed Feet Boy, aka Ben not his real name. So now time for the dates with Kate scoreboard. I'm going to score up this date and see how much it comes to. So for this date, date experience. See now I don't know whether to score this really high because the date experience was extraordinary and hilarious or really low because it was just an abomination of what romance is. I'm going to score it a three. Date experience three. Date location, I would give it a six. It was really busy. I remember there being a long queue for the bar. It was quite loud in there because it's also a gig venue. So I would give that a six. Date etiquette, I mean, we went Dutch. He got his feet out. <laughs> probably not the best etiquette on a date. What I would say though is props to him for getting something so personal. I guess I know why he was doing that because he wanted to show me his flaws on the first date um, so that I wouldn't run a mile if we had got too invested but I think if I loved someone that deeply I wouldn't run a mile if they had deformed feet. I think it was just the fact he did it that early on and in such a way I don't know it was so bizarre. So date etiquette I'm gonna give it a four. Looks I would give him a seven. He was completely my type, kind of like scruffy, pointy shoes, kind of like rocker, like mod kind of look. And I really liked that at the time. So I'd give him a seven. And snog, I can't really remember if we had a snog. You know what, I think we did. So I'm gonna give it a five because if we didn't, that's great. And if we did, that's all right too. So the total is, da ding. I really hope you have enjoyed this date story. If you would like to see more dates with Kate, also leave me a comment down below and be sure to thumbs up and subscribe. I love you guys lots. Be assured that you are not the only one going on bizarre dates. And our soulmates are out there somewhere. Mwah. Bye.